Uh, next, we're talking about Keir Starmer and the, well, ultimately deflating Labour leadership race coming to its conclusion. This week, of course, we'll see the new Labour leader being elected. There was a great piece in Labour list. We're not going to link to it or show it. Uh, I saw Michael commenting on Twitter a few days ago. All of the leadership candidates and deputy leadership candidates will have to produce a video, uh, you know, uh, an acceptance speech, so to speak. Uh, and the one who wins, uh, well, that will be the one that's actually published. A very strange experience for all involved, I'm sure. Uh, there was an article in The Critic today. I wouldn't like to, to uh, link to this too frequently. It's uh, the same magazine where Toby Young wrote a rather daft article. Uh, and it was by John McTernan, a former Blairite spin doctor. The piece is titled Five Rules for Ruling. Uh, not the most uh, 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 sort of, you know, tidy title. Uh, nonetheless, memo to Keir Starmer from John McTernan with the subheader, there's no problem with a witch hunt when there really are witches. Uh, humorous, if nothing else. So uh, in that memo, McTernan has five proposals. Act immediately. Act ruthlessly. I mean, those are relatively apolitical. Punish the losers. We're getting a bit more political here. And then finally, ignore party members and take back the unions. Uh, an early suggestion is to sack the general secretary and all related staff immediately. We should probably take that seriously, given something to that effect was mooted in the Sunday Times a few days ago and is repeated here. And then there's punish the losers. Point three. I'm just going to read to you from that. Continuity Corbynistas like Rebecca Long Bailey and Richard Bergen must be exiled to the back benches for the rest of their parliamentary careers, which should be as brief as possible. Victory has to be absolute. It's crucial to show you understand just how toxic Corbyn's tax and spend manifesto, default dislike of business and deep lack of patriotism really were. Clearly, this was uh, a piece written in the weeks before COVID-19 took hold and the government effectively socialised significant amounts of wages from the private sector. Uh, but this is, to be blunt, not pulling its punches. What do you think, Michael? Uh, does John McDermott have Keir Starmer's ear? Uh, well, I mean, it's interesting with Keir Starmer, isn't it? Because obviously his whole campaign has been run on the basis of I am the unity candidate. And I respect that the Labour Party is a broad church. And so I'm going to try and bring people on, win them round through argument instead of factional fighting. Um, but then I think I think it was that Sunday Times piece where sort of in the, in the same piece it says Keir Starmer wants to get rid of factionalism and also he's going to sack everyone in, in the party who doesn't come from his faction, um, which, you know, there, there's a bit of an incongruence there. Uh, I mean, when it comes to what, what John McTernan's written in terms of, you know, getting rid of a toxic tax and spend manifesto, as you say, um, the government are spending a hell of a lot more than we ever would imagine. Obviously, that's because we're in a in a period of crisis. That doesn't mean yeah. they've converted to social democracy. Yeah. Um, but presumably the battle that the Labour Party are going to have to fight when this is all over is that the cost of coronavirus should be paid by the wealthy. Um, but not, not necessarily because they caused coronavirus. I mean, they, they didn't. There are some wealthy interests who I think share some blame when it comes to why our NHS has been chronically, has been subject to chronic underinvestment. People who have dodged tax or who've campaigned for it to be lower, for example. But it's clear that you know, it's going to be the, the wealthy with the broadest shoulders to rebuild society. There was another interesting argument, actually, in the by the director of the IFS, who said one one thing that should should happen likely is that we sort of inflate our way out of this debt, which he was saying has you know there's some equity problems there in terms of distributional justice, but actually inflation tends to be quite good for the working class because what it does is it reduces the it reduces wealth inequalities fundamentally. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't seen yet what John McTernan's plan is for rebuilding Britain after coronavirus, because, I mean, this could have been written in you know, 1992, couldn't it? Could have been written in 1984, yeah. you know, for, for say, like Neil Kinnock has to be brutal when he's, you know, fighting militant, etc. And he has to, you know, dump, dump everything left wing. It, it doesn't seem to me that John McTernan has you know, particularly come to terms with the fact that we live in a somewhat different world to the one in which he, you know, developed his own political career. So on that note, we go to uh, graphic four, Punish. It's been labelled by Fox. Punishing Bergen and Long Bailey will alienate a portion of the membership. Good. 
Let them return in disgust to the fringe parties where they should have been all along. We talk about several hundred thousand people here. They clearly all didn't come from the SWP. Remember the words of the Tory Prime Minister, A.J. Balfour, quote, I'd rather take advice from my valet than from the Conservative Party conference. Don't fetishise party members. Any gathering of more than a handful is disproof of the notion of the wisdom of crowds. Restore party conference to its proper role, a loyal leadership rally. What do you think of that, Michael? I mean, that's when I thought maybe he's sort of trying to provoke here, but sort of with a, a dash of comedy. But maybe maybe you disagree. I mean, it's a funny article. He's quite a funny guy. Um, so I think he probably relished the the extent to which people would take offence at what he's writing. But I don't think that means that he doesn't believe it. Um, to be honest, when I read this, I thought that this is actually what John McTurnan believes. Um, and I suppose what's what's different about John McTurnan to many other people on his wing of the party is he's very open about what he believes, yeah. which is that Evening's members should have no role. The party should be run purely by um, political professionals who have no accountability to members whatsoever. Um, and to, you know, basically disown anything that's particularly anti-war or left-wing, et cetera, et cetera. We had him on the show, actually, in it must have been a couple of years ago now mm -hmm. with Grace Blakely on, you know, it's sort of an interesting argument about centrist economics versus third way, what, so centrist economics versus socialist economics. Um, you know, all all interesting. Obviously, I agreed more with Grace and him, but then by the end of it, uh, you know, he was still justifying the Iraq war still saying it was a good thing. So this is this is someone with some quite extreme ideas about what the future leader of the Labour Party should be advocating for. And so, I mean, you picked up on also what's the what's been misunderstood in this paragraph, which is to say that Corbynistas or people that join the Labour Party to vote for Corbyn should be in fringe parties. Because I mean, if all the people who join the Labour Party to vote for Corbyn should be in a fringe party, then that fringe party would be bigger than the Labour Party, right? Uh, we've got 1,349 watching, only 595 likes. Come on, smash the like button. The, the more likes we get, uh, the more humorous things are going to be after this weekend with the likes of John McTurnan. What's interesting is actually he reviewed my book uh, in the Financial Times. And it was it was quite a nice review. Uh, but uh, a P, uh, sort of uh, something he says in this piece about be magnanimous in defeat and be total in victory sums him up because i remember actually, totally what he was doing for the last four years yeah, right? I'm, I'm, he was oh, being got, magnanimous totally he's like obviously that's that's an inversion of what you're meant to do yeah. i did I, I did sky with him the day after the 2017 general election he was like you know what i was wrong we need to work together and um, and that's when we should have said fuck you yeah <laughs> and yeah well, if, we, if we were taking a if we were taking a, a lesson out of john mcturnan's right. book that's precisely what we would have done right that's, that's what he, that's what he would have done yeah. And instead we had, I mean, well, we can talk about this more. We'll talk about it more in a second. Let's let's move on. This is the final part where he talks about uh, Tony Blair. This is bizarre. Tony Blair once said about party discipline, you only have to break one of their legs, not both of them. Actually, the trick is to make people believe you're willing to break their legs. It's time for Sean Connery's strategy against Al Capone and the Untouchables. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital. You send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way, and that's how you get Capone. Now, do you want to do that? Are you ready to do that? What's interesting is that if a, if a Jeremy Corbyn supporting journalist wrote those words in a magazine, you know there would be th there would honestly be thousands of tweets calling on Jeremy Corbyn to disown him, uh, and yet here, I mean, we we hear absolutely nothing. Uh -huh.